Can Ethereum hit $10,000 per coin? Is that even possible? When could this happen? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about in this video today. I'm going to analyze the current Ethereum price and look at the factors that could send it to $10,000. As always, I must fully disclose that sadly, I am not a financial advisor. I do not warrant this as financial advice. I'm a blockchain developer who works for the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis and also an Ethereum investor because I see what happens in this space and I firmly believe in this technology and the asset itself for the long run. So this is just my opinion. I'm going to lay my analysis out there and you can make your own decision. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So let's look at what could cause Ethereum or Ether to hit $10,000 per coin. So essentially, we're going to answer three big questions, the what, the when, and the why. So we'll start off with the what. You know, what has to happen for each coin to be worth $10,000? And this is called the unit price, you know, $10,000 per coin. And it's important to understand how this functions when you're evaluating cryptocurrencies, because you might be tempted to say, well, you know, Bitcoin has been worth $20,000. So Ethereum should easily be worth half that, right? Not so fast. So this is a really common mistake when you compare unit prices of cryptocurrencies that have different supplies. See, there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in existence. And right now there's over 113 million Ether out there. So you can't just look at the unit price by itself without considering the market cap of the cryptocurrency. So let me explain. If you're trying to figure out if a cryptocurrency can actually reach a certain price per unit, so $10,000 per Ether, you have to think about the total market cap of that cryptocurrency and see if it can actually get that big. And so in order to do that, we need to figure out what ETH's market cap would be if the unit price was $10,000. So we can figure that out with a simple formula. So the market cap is basically the unit price multiplied by the total supply. All right, so the total plot supply of Ether at the time of recording this video, again, is 113 million, all right? So we'll just use that for an easy number. And so if you multiply 113 million times 10,000, all right, then that is a market cap of just over $1.1 trillion. So in other words, all the ETH in existence has to be worth over 1.1 trillion US dollars. So is that even possible? Well, in order to answer that question, let's look at the value of some other things out there. Basically, we can ask ourselves like, hey, what else is worth over a trillion dollars? Well, Apple is worth over $2 trillion and Amazon is worth over $1.5 trillion. And depending on who you ask, gold's market cap is estimated at around $9 trillion. And some of you might be thinking like, hey, that's not really an apples to apples comparison. You know, you can't look at ether and try to value it against something like Apple or gold. To which I would agree with you and say this is a very rough comparison because what else can you really compare ether against? What is it? Is it a currency? Is it a commodity? Is it a capital asset? We don't really have a good analogy outside of the world of blockchains and cryptocurrency to compare it to. So I think it's good to have this rough comparison initially. Let's also look at the total addressable market because that's another critical measure to determine whether or not ETH could hit 10K. So in order to look at the total addressable market, you have to first ask yourself, what can you do with Ether? Well, Ethereum holds the potential to create a brand new financial system that competes with our existing financial system in many ways. You can do things like payments, savings and lending, and derivatives trading. And for this reason, you have to add all these things up to create the total addressable market that Ether can take a part of. And these traditional capital markets are massive. You know, global debt is 250 trillion, derivatives are 524 trillion, and equities are closing in at 90 trillion. And so, yeah, traditional capital markets are indeed massive. And so the total addressable market is trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. So if ETH can just take like a small fraction of that market, then its market cap could conceivably hit $1.1 trillion, sending the unit price of one Ethereum coin to $10,000. So when could this happen? Like how long would it take ETH to reach a market cap of $1.1 trillion and $10,000 per coin? Is it next year? Three, five, 10 years? So based upon the relatively short lifespan of cryptocurrencies, the prices tend to move in cycles and that they go up for a while and they kind of go down for a while and go up for a while over multiple years. So if you're trying to answer like, when could ETH hit 10K? You might want to ask yourself like, is it going to be in this cycle, the next cycle, you know, the one after that? So let's look at a few different perspectives on this. So I'll put a link to this article down in the description below. This quantitative analyst thinks that Ethereum could hit $10,000 in this market cycle, the one 
one that we're currently in. He says if ETH continues on in this manner and is in fact one market cycle behind BTC, then we make peak at approximately 1000% above the fair value in a few years. If this happens in say 2023, then this could put a theoretical peak just shy of a modest 10K per ETH. So another perspective is from Chris Berniski, and he doesn't exactly think it's going to go to 10,000 this cycle, but he does expect a move towards 5,000 and potentially higher. So for me personally, I don't focus too much on the actual time frame for ETH hitting $10,000 because I have what's called a low time preference. Essentially, I'm invested for the long term. You know, I personally think the ETH price is going to go a lot higher than it currently is. And I don't necessarily care how long it's going to take to do that. But I do expect it to outperform, you know, any other possibility available to me right now. And that's why I hold it for the long term. So, for example, let's say it takes 10 years for ETH to hit $10,000 uh, from a price of $500. We'll just do that for easy math, 10 years. That would be a 34.9% annualized return. And that's over 10 years. So let's say it's five years. That would be an 82% annualized return. And one year would be a whopping 1,900% annualized return. And so for me personally, if Ether ever hits $10,000 in the next 10 years, then that's probably going to outperform any other passive investment that I would personally put money into right now. Okay, so we've talked about the what has to happen for ETH to hit 10K, you know, when this could potentially happen. Now let's talk about the why. Well, ultimately, the price is determined by the supply and the demand. Okay, so if the price is going to go up, then the demand has to increase faster than new ETH is issued or faster than the supply goes up. In other words, there has to be a lot more buyers for ETH at those price levels than sellers of ETH at those price levels. So why would the demand go up? What would cause people to want to not sell Ether, causing the price to increase? Well, they wouldn't sell it because they're essentially using it in some way because ETH's utility value is really high. Basically, you can do a lot of different things with Ether. So you could use it as a store of value. So if the price is going up and people want to get that appreciation, then that's utility for them. They don't want to sell in that case. This is the most common use case for other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, but Ether can do so much more than that. Remember I talked earlier about Ether having the potential to create a brand new financial system that competes with the one that we have now. And if that vision truly unfolds and there's so much you can do with ETH that would cause people to not want to sell it. So we'll get into that part in a second, but let's look at the other ways. So payments, you know, you can pay for things with Ether, uh, you can also stake it. So now that Ethereum 2.0 is rolling out, it's moving from proof of work to proof of stake, which basically means all the miners on the network are getting replaced by validators who take their Ether, their Ethereum cryptocurrency, and lock it up in their nodes in order to participate in confirming transactions on the network. So don't worry if you don't completely understand what that means, but basically that means there's a lot of people that are just going to hold on to Ether, lock it into their own computer, and not sell it because earning them a passive income reward, a lot like mining cryptocurrency would, but they're staking it instead. So that's going to lock up a lot of the available supply supply of ETH. So, you know, if the exact same number of people demand to buy Ether right now, but there's fewer sellers, then that's going to cause the price to increase. All right. So staking alone could have an impact on price. And also going back to what I said a second ago, if we do have a new financial system created by Ether that's powered by dApps, smart contracts around the network that create these new financial based applications, then a lot of these things are going to tie up Ether as well to lock ETH in as like collateral for loans. ETH will be used as a reserve asset for stable coins. And it'll also be a desirable asset to just use to pay for transactions in this new financial system. So let me talk about a few of those things really quickly. So first and foremost, right now, the time of recording this video, there's over 1 million ETH staked into Ethereum 2.0. Uh, so they can become validators at the ETH 2.0 network launch for the Beacon chain, all right? So that's nearly 1% of all ETH in existence. So also uh, in DeFi right now, so this is decentralized finance, this is the beginning of this new financial system that Ethereum is trying to create. There's nearly $15 billion of value locked into this, all right? This is not all Ether, right? Full, full disclosure here, but still a lot of value, okay? And this value has grown, you know, over 15X in the past year alone. So now ETH is definitely being used in a lot of these different applications uh, as a reserve asset, you know, to use as collateral for loans, all that kind of stuff like I talked about. So let's kind of go through a few of these scenarios one by one. So DAI is a stable cryptocurrency whose price doesn't change. It's really useful for like global uh, payments that don't have, you know, volatility associated with them. It's a you know, fully decentralized cryptocurrency. And ETH is a very big portion of what's backing DAI's value. Because when you have a stable coin, you have to have some sort of assets, you know, backing it up that guarantee it value. So DAI's uh, market cap is over a billion dollars at the time of recording this video. So again, ETH is not the only asset backing DAI, but that gives you an idea of, you know, its size, okay, and also what it's used for. 
So again, it's also used for, you know, savings and lending. People can use ETH as collateral for loans. And you might say like, hey, why would you want to do that? Well, it's pretty simple. There are lots of reasons, but one really uh, common use case is basically to borrow money against your cryptocurrency that you're holding for the long term, because this allows you to use that money without paying taxes from selling it. So let's say that you, you know, held some ETH that went up 5X in the price. Well, you could basically borrow your original principal from a DeFi app uh, for example, and then you could use that money to go make more money and then pay back your original loan later. So you can do that with applications like Compound Finance, also Aave, these are money market accounts, all right? Also, Uniswap is a decentralized uh, exchange and ETH is a very common asset pair on this decentralized exchange and people can earn passive income for parking their ETH inside of Uniswap. And so if ETH has you know big demand, the demand increases uh, because of all this utility value, and the supply uh, doesn't increase, you know, much more than, of course, the price will go up, all right? And the supply doesn't increase at a faster rate, then, of course, the price will go up. Now, the other thing to think about is with DeFi, like I talked about, with these stable coins, with loans, et cetera, et cetera, the effective available supply will go down because people are locking it into staking, they're locking it into these apps, and there'll be fewer sellers, like I was talking about earlier. If there are more buyers than there are sellers, then that's a huge catalyst for a price to increase. And so all these things together could have a huge impact on why ETH could reach $10,000. And so if Ethereum does create this brand new financial system that becomes in high demand, then it stands to reason that Ether, the underlying asset, would also become in high demand, which means that it could conceivably have a market cap of over $1.1 trillion, which would mean that Ethereum could hit $10,000 per coin. So in summary, if Ethereum is going to hit $10,000 per coin, then the total market cap has to exceed $1.1 trillion. There are lots of things that already have market caps above this amount, you know, tech companies, gold, et cetera, et cetera. And while those aren't perfect analogies, the Ethereum network itself has a total addressable market way bigger than this because it does things like savings, loans, derivatives, you know, trading. So you can compare it to all the other markets out there, like global debt, derivatives, equities markets. And when you add a up together, then that's a really big pie. And Ether just has to take a really small percentage of that pie in order for its market cap to exceed $1.1 trillion. And if the Ethereum network does become, you know, the backbone of a brand new global financial system that competes with the system that we have right now, then this is entirely possible. And now, of course, as always, there's no guarantee that this is going to happen. No one knows for sure if it will. And even if it does, we don't really know when. But I'm personally optimistic about Ether for the long term and think that it's going to be a much better investment for me personally than many of the other options that are on the table right now. And for everything that I'm seeing in this space with all the brand new innovation, all the ETH getting locked up for staking in ETH 2.0, in DeFi for these savings, loans, trading, et cetera, et cetera. I'm seeing a ton of new demand for Ether itself, which I think will be a likely, you know, a big catalyst to cause the price to increase. You know, we'll see how high it goes. So I hope you like this video. You know, as always, smash that like button down below and subscribe to this channel. And if you're new around here, or hey, maybe you've been watching this channel for a while already, and you're interested in this technology and want to learn how to become a developer, or maybe you're a developer already, uh, you know, lots of people get interested in the technology itself after watching cryptocurrency, right? That was my story. I became a blockchain developer after watching cryptocurrency prices go up and up. And that's what got me excited about the tech. So if you're like that and you want to learn how to code, uh, then you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And hey, if you like those and you want to take the next step uh, and really, you know, jump into this blockchain space, maybe you want to change your career, uh, land a high paying job, become a freelancer, you know, build your own project, then I can show you how to do that. All right. I'll show you how to do everything step by step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. All right. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.